Welcome to this video lecture on enthalpy. Enthalpy is a new property that we'll be discussing. It involves internal energy, pressure, and volume. It's a quantity that shows up very frequently in therm thermal fluid analyses, uh, specifically when we deal with control volume analyses where we have flow into and out of a control volume. So that's we're just going to introduce the topic today, and then I'll save examples for, for separate videos. So to go ahead and take a look at your screen. So on the screen here we have uh, this is really kind of an interesting video. It, it shows just how much energy or how much power it takes to actually do something simple like creating a piece of toast. So what we have here is this is a, a German Olympic sprint cyclist. So one of the best cyclists in the world. He's on a stationary bike that's generating power. So he's, you know, turning the, the cranks here, uh, turns a shaft, turns a generator, which then gets converted in electrical power that goes into creating some toast. And it just shows how much we take for granted simple things like, you know, creating toast. It's, it takes a lot of energy to do that. And so it's a really interesting video. I encourage you to take a look at it when you're finished with this video lecture. So let's go ahead and uh, start talking about enthalpy, this new property. So enthalpy, we'll use the symbol capital H for that. And then when we talk about specific enthalpy, we'll use little h. It's defined as the internal energy plus the pressure times the volume. And the pressure, by the way, is an absolute pressure that we should use for that. And specific enthalpy will just be the specific internal energy plus pressure times specific volume. Now, the reason we define this quantity enthalpy is because that combination of variables shows up frequently. The internal energy, pressure times volume, that, that shows up a lot in our analyses. And it really shows up most frequently when we do control volume analyses, where we have flow into and out of a control volume. And I'll just show you that here in a moment. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and write out the first law for a control volume. So if you recall, it looks something like this. Let me just write it all down, and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so there's our first law expression for control volume. Uh, let me just draw a control volume over here. So it's some arbitrary control volume. We've got some mass flow rate going in, some mass flow rate going out. And this term is the time rate of change of total energy in the control volume. This is the rate at which we add energy via heat transfer into the control volume. This is the rate at which the control volume is doing work on the surroundings. This is the rate at which we add total energy into our control volume because we're bringing new mass into the control volume. So there may be some mass coming in here, bringing in its total energy with it, and that will increase the total energy of the control volume. And then similarly, we could have mass leaving our control volume, taking that mass's total energy out with it, and so that will act to decrease the total energy in our control volume. Now, I'm gonna expand a couple of terms here. First of all, just remember that the rate at which we do work, that can, can, that can include a number of different types of work. We could have, for example, shaft work. We could have electrical work. We could have spring work. And most importantly for our discussion here, we can have pressure work. And recall that the rate at which we do pressure work is, well, let me just write down pressure work but done by the system is just PDV work. Right, so I want to just emphasize that there's a, a pressure and a volume that shows up there. Okay, so that's embedded in this rate of pressure work term. The other thing I want to highlight is this specific total energy. Remember that specific total energy, let me write it here, is the specific internal energy plus specific kinetic energy plus specific potential energy. Here the Z in G or in opposite directions. So as you increase your elevation Z, that increases, there's a plus here, increases your potential energy. So if you look at this expression, you'll see that we have a specific internal energy that shows up in this term, this E. We also have a PDV type of term right there that shows up in this rate of work term, which just shows up there. So through some manipulation, and I won't go through the details here, we'll save it for a different video lecture, but you can combine those 
terms, that pressure volume term and the internal energy term to create an enthalpy. And if you do all that and go through the, the effort of that derivation, you'll get the following form for the first law for control volume. So let me write it out and then I'll explain the differences. Just a lot more to write out, so it takes a little extra time here. So again, we'll do the derivation uh, separate time. We won't do it right here. Okay, so here we are with our new form for the first law for a control volume. It looks much the same, but there are a few important differences. Number one, if you look at the rate at which the control volume does work on the surroundings, you notice I wrote the word other here. What I mean by that is it's all the work other than pressure work. It's, it's the shaft work, electrical work, spring work, everything but not the pressure work. And the reason I didn't put the pressure work there is because the pressure work has been embedded now in this specific enthalpy term. Remember, specific enthalpy is like internal energy plus PV. So that pressure work, PDV work, has been incorporated now into that specific enthalpy that's now into this into the control volume and out of control volume terms. So you can see that the U is there. You still have your kinetic energy and potential energy. Those are still there. But we've, we've just used the specific enthalpy to include the internal energy. And now the PDV kind of work has been moved from the W dot term and just brought into these terms. Okay, now there's a whole derivation for it. Like I said, we're just not going to do it here. But it's this form of the first law that we'll use over and over again when we analyze control volumes. And so I just wanted to show you that here to motivate why we define this specific enthalpy term. It's because it shows up naturally when we analyze uh, control volumes using the first law. Now, the way that you find specific enthalpy is we can use the tables just like what we did for specific volume and specific internal energy. Uh, I don't have the tables on this particular set of notes, but in the previous couple of lectures, we talked about how you'd find specific volume, specific internal energy using the compressed liquid, superheated vapor, or saturated liquid uh, vapor mixture tables. You can do the same thing for specific enthalpy. You can use quality when you have a mixture. Um, you, can, you can do all the same kinds of manipulations to those tables to find what the specific enthalpy is. Okay. Now, one of the things we did in a couple, uh, video lecture a couple of video lectures ago was to write down some approximations for properties in the compressed liquid region. We can do the same sort of thing for specific enthalpy. So let me write those down. So approximations in the compressed liquid region. So if you'll recall, previously we talked about to, to find the specific volume some arbitrary temperature and pressure in the compressed liquid region, that's about equal to the specific volume of the saturated liquid at that same temperature. So the pressure really doesn't factor into it there. Similarly, the specific internal energy in the compressed liquid region is about equal to the specific internal energy of the saturated liquid at the same temperature. So we talked about those in previous lectures. So very handy approximations that we use all the time it just makes it easier to use the tables. So those are two approximations we use. Now let's go ahead and look at the approximation for specific enthalpy. So let's write out the specific enthalpy for compressed liquid at a temperature and pressure. That'll about be equal to the following. Let me just write it out and I'll explain it. Remember, specific enthalpy is internal energy plus P times V. So all I did was expand this out, but I made use of these approximations here, right? So instead of the specific internal energy of the compressed liquid at temperature and pressure, I just used that approximation to write it here. Similarly, instead of writing out the specific volume for the compressed liquid, which is a function of temperature and pressure, I used the specific volume at the saturated liquid value at that temperature, okay? So that's getting us along the way for our approximation for specific enthalpy. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to 
write an expression where I can simplify this term here, the specific internal energy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write the specific enthalpy for the saturated liquid at a given temperature. That's going to be equal to the specific internal energy of the saturated liquid at that particular temperature, plus the saturation pressure at that temperature times the specific volume of the saturated liquid at that temperature. So what I'm doing is I'm just finding the specific enthalpy of the saturated liquid at the given temperature. Here, this is the, the pressure, the saturation pressure corresponding to that temperature. Okay, so that's, if you remember in the saturated liquid vapor mixture tables, you have a, two columns, one with pressure and one with temperature. When you're, when you're given a particular temperature, there's a particular saturation pressure that that corresponds to, and that's what this quantity is right here. So I can go ahead and rearrange that to solve for the specific internal energy of the saturated liquid. So I've just done a little rearranging of the previous equation. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to substitute it in right there. So that when I do that, I get my final expression for the approximation. And it'll look like this. So that's the approximation we'll use for finding specific enthalpy in the compressed liquid region. So here is the actual value of the compressed liquid specific enthalpy at some temperature and pressure, and it'll approximately be equal to the specific enthalpy of the saturated liquid at that temperature, plus the actual pressure that we're interested in, that's this P here, let me highlight it, so that P and this P are the same one, minus the saturation pressure for the given temperature, Right, that's the value in that SLVM table. Time, that whole, that difference there multiplied by the specific volume of the saturated liquid at that temperature. So that's the approximation we'll use for specific enthalpy. So here's our approx here are our approximations for specific volume and specific internal energy, and then here's our approximation for specific enthalpy. Now sometimes you'll see people only use this part of this approximation, they'll ignore the delta P times the specific volume part. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. It's really not the most accurate way to do it. I encourage you to, to keep the delta P V term in there. That's the most accurate way to calculate these, this approximation. So just, just try to remember to use the whole thing. Okay, so I think that's everything I want to say about enthalpy in this lecture. We'll save examples for separate video example videos and we'll come back to specific enthalpy again when we start talking about applying the first law to control volumes because that's really where it shows up over and over again it'll be one of the most common properties that we make use of okay so we'll end it there